Toronto, Canada. To most of the world, this city is known as Hollywood North, the Six. But for a select few, it's home. The city not only comprises some of music and film's most celebrated personalities, but proudly harbors some of sport's most recognized athletes. Today, in the heart of what some might call one of sport's most fanatic cities in the world, trains future boxing legend Samuel Vargas as he prepares for his biggest fight of his boxing career. My name is Samuel Vargas, I'm 29 years old, and on September 8th, I'll be fighting Amir Khan. Since its announcement on June 20th, many fans have been questioning and doubting whether or not Samuel Vargas is a sufficient enough test for the former two-time champion. But for Vargas, these questions are anything but new. These questions are the same questions he asks himself through every training camp, whether it's preparing to be in front of a home audience of a thousand or a mega fight with future Hall of Fame boxers Danny Garcia and Errol Spence Jr. in front of thousands. Uh, I mean, when, when people come at me like that, it's just like, I let it bounce off because I've heard some, you gotta think, I've heard some, I've heard everything from, from Spence fans, from, from people counting me out from Garcia. I've heard everything, so it's, you kind of become numb. But at the same time, I know in the back of my mind, like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make you feel stupid for saying that. You know what I'm saying? I've been there with the best. Obviously, I didn't get the results I wanted. And, but those are my biggest lessons, I'd say. Proven to shine and come back relentlessly, former two-time champion Amir Khan has been eager to show the world why he belongs at the top of the pound-for-pound -pound list. His last win, coming in the form of just 39 seconds against former WBC international champion Phil Logreco. Well, you gotta be out of your fucking mind to put me and him on the same caliber. You know, we're, we're completely different, we're from different cloths, you know. If Sammy Vargas is gonna show up there, I'm sure it's gonna be a hostile territory, but uh, I'll impose my will on him. He's an old man, he, he's been hurt before, he's been, he's been starched before many times. See, people, people always ask me or tell me, oh, he's got a glass chin, champ, you got this, but it's not like he's going to go out there and say, here, hit me. It's not going, it's going to be out there on a silver platter, you know. The guys, at the end of the day, the guys are former world champion. The fight game is a lucrative game. And if there is anyone who understands the term boxing is a business, it's head promoter Lee Baxter. He's not anything you'd expect a world-class promoter to be, running a full-time tattoo studio at the epicenter of Toronto's hipster district, complete with a wardrobe to match. When I initially opened it, I really didn't know anything about tattoos. I sat in that shop for like a year with no clients. Because it's like a chicken or an egg situation. I didn't have really any good artists and I had clients, but then I couldn't really bring all my friends there to get crap tattoos. So I had to simultaneously get clients to be able to get good artists. I was like, I was young. I didn't really know that much about business. I only had a one-year lease. Like I was hiring people, trying to pick their brain in the job interview to understand what the hell I was doing. Yeah, well, there's been huge names here. Um, Kevin Garnett, famous basketball player. Um, Drake. We had to go to him though. He's just too big to be here. Travis Scott. He uh, he was coming here every day, and then we almost had to make him leave because he would just hang out every day. Justin Bieber. Baxter's no stranger to the boxing scene in Canada. He's put on some of the biggest events ever to exist in the city, and as of recent, was the showrunner for the Stevenson vs. Jack card held by Mayweather Promotions and Showtime Boxing. And tonight, like any other night, Baxter has put together yet another event in Toronto featuring local fighters. I get, I'll get inspiration from other sports. Like if, when the Jays were playing game five, 
and Batista is about to hit a home run. You're there, you have goosebumps. There's 50, 60,000 people. Like, you're, you're walking down Queen Street and everyone's stopping what they're doing, looking through the window at a TV. Like, it's, it's epic. I think uh, with, the, with the help of like MLSC and, and, and big companies like this that, you know, gave us a, a media platform, an outlet, for, for people to see what we do or see how often the shows are up going in the city. If there's anyone who has more of a responsibility to not only keep Vargas mentally, but physically ready, it's head coach and former Olympian, Chris Johnson. He's got a bull mentality, no matter what. He's gonna get through it, he's gonna walk through it, he's gonna, he's gonna find his way through it, he's gonna go through. If the door is locked, he's gonna knock it down. That's just how he is. And, you know, he's, I'm proud to see where he's at. I, through all that he's been through, uh, he's pushed himself to this level. And, you know, he's just an extraordinary young man. Uh, just the heart and the desire and the passion in him to, to be successful. You know, I've, I've been, I work hard. I work very hard in boxing. I sacrifice a lot. I'm just a regular guy that just decided not to quit, not to give up, to get up, to, to keep on going. And this year I am. That's why I was given this opportunity. All the pressure is on him, really. So, I mean, I just gotta let him know that he's the smaller man and let him know that I'm dictating the pace of the fight. What happens September 8th? I think that Sammy is going to touch him. And when Sammy touches him once, he's gonna touch him twice. When he touches twice, he's gonna touch him three times. And, and I think they're gonna see, they're gonna see a young man on the rise. They say true champions aren't made in rings, but rather made in gems. For Samuel Vargas, this isn't about where he's been or what brought him here. It's about what happens next. This is All or Nothing.